All right. And hi, everyone. Um, I recognize a lot of names here, but just in case you've never been on before, I'm Christine Kerner. I'm the Director of Secondary Mathematics for the State Department, and this is the OK Math Office Hour. So welcome. Um, today, we are going to be talking about a couple different engagement activities that you can use both in your classroom, if it's normal classroom, uh, you know, as per usual, or if we're still in a distance learning environment. So I know a lot of you are finishing up your school years, um, either this week or next week, but hopefully the strategies that are being presented today are ones that you can take with you and use even in the upcoming academic year. So um, can everyone see my screen and the presentation slide? Okay, I see. I see one head nod because Brandy's yes. the only one on video, so I just want to make sure. <laughs> but good. All right. So um, if you go to the bit.ly uh, that is listed, so bit.ly slash math distance five, that will give you access to today's slides and there are links in there to additional resources and well, I'm typing it in and can't do two things at once apparently. Um, and there's links to the strategies themselves and to additional activities. So you might want to have access to those slides and there will be some direct links you can click on throughout this um, that might make your life a little bit easier. So without further ado, that's my info. Make sure you save it, screenshot it, email me anytime. I try to get back to you as quickly as possible. So please continue to reach out. And we're gonna do a quick poll as we normally do in these office hours. And this time we have four different memes. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Um, and so you should see a poll in front of you and it's just asking how you're feeling today. Go ahead and select one, two, three, or four. And I'll stop the poll in about 10 seconds. All right, I'm going to share the results with you because I think it's very interesting. We're pretty much split across the board. Um, we have the most barely edging over the top with all right, all right, all right. But we also have a mix of emotions going on, which is definitely understandable. I know some people were going into their classrooms and cleaning them out for the last time or um, you are finishing up your last week with your students ever and they might be going on to a new building or new journeys entirely um, outside of education and so i can understand how there might be a wide range of emotions hopefully we've gotten a little bit more used to the distance learning thing but that's still relatively new and so it's understandable that we're feeling all sorts of feelings. Um, I do want to take a moment to say happy teacher appreciation week because you guys are amazing and you should be celebrated every day of the year, but at least we get one week for you. Um, but if you haven't seen the State Department Facebook page lately, we just posted an appreciation video and I hope you'll check that out at some point, just so you know, we love you, we appreciate you. Mm. Thank you for everything that you do always, every day. All right. So today, um, hopefully we'll get a chance to share a few of our own ideas in addition to the engagements that I'm presenting to you. Um, but like I said, two major activities that hopefully you'll be able to take back and directly use in your classroom, however that looks like. 
I always keep the slide up because it's very important to have some self-care. Make sure you're taking care of yourself, however that looks. Um, I've been trying to send blurbs in the newsletters about ideas for self-care, but make sure that you're taking care of yourself and you're making yourself happy every once in a while. And let's get into it. So we've talked about Desmos the past couple office hours. And what I wanted to do is give you a specific activity example to encourage and promote student discussion and student engagement. And so we're going to actually participate and do some math at this point. And so if you would, please go, you can open a new tab or um, your browser or you can use your phone, but this activity isn't the best with phones. It can work, but I would recommend using a computer if you can. Um, but you go to student.desmos.com and type in the code X3N8BP. And when you get there, you can either log in with Google or if you don't have a Gmail account, you can just type in your name. You can type in a random name for this. It doesn't have to be your real name unless you want it to be. Um, normally, I would require students to sign in with their Gmail or um, I would force them to put their first and last names in there. And if they didn't put in the correct name, I'd kick them out. But for this time, we are just going to look forward okay it looks like we have two students in here right now and i will copy and paste the pre-populated code in the chat too in case you need that so if you copy and paste that whole pre-populated code you can also get directly to the activity Um, if you try um, hitting escape to get out of my presentation, it might be in full screen mode for you. That might be part of it too. I'm assuming your name is not Kidwo, but I could be wrong. Okay, so when you go to the screen, okay, um, Breda, not sure what's going on then, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll make sure to play as a student so you can see what's going on at least. All right, so when I sign in, I've already signed in, so that's why it says welcome back, Christine, but you're gonna join and enter your name. And I'm just gonna get to pick a friend. And the first round always, they have a computer play against you for this game. It's called Polygraph. And so if you've ever played Guess Who before, um, back in the day at all, um, this is similar. So is your person wearing a long sleeve shirt? My person is not. And so then someone else on the other side is going to eliminate all the things they don't think it is. Is your person wearing glasses? Yes. And is your person wearing a striped shirt? No. So they've got it pretty much narrowed down. No. Yes, they are. And they got me right, they guessed it. So that's what you and a randomly assigned partner are going to be doing next, but with math. 
So um, as soon as you're paired up with a partner, you'll be able to ask a question. So I'm going to select a graph and whoever my partner is, is going to know what I'm selecting, but that's okay. Uh, so let's select this one right here. Okay. And so my partner is going to be asking me a yes or no question. And based on my answer, they're going to be eliminating graphs. And so the idea for this is to boost math vocabulary, to get kids asking more specific questions, um, and to really get them reflecting on what the concept is that you're presenting to your classroom and to your group. Um, and so as they ask questions, they can narrow it down. If they end up guessing the wrong item, it tells them that they guessed wrong. And so then they can go back and look at all their questions and see, hmm, was there anything that was a misconception? Did the person answering the question um, for, confuse interior and exterior, alternate angles or something like that? Um, so lots of different ways to engage and discuss. And what's nice about this activity is even though you all are in different homes, you're still paired up with each other. And so you can do this um, as a part of your live classroom streaming, or you can do this um, at different times during the day and they can be put together as they are logging in. So I would recommend having you know, specific times that you assign this activity for, but you could say like, all right, between one and two, you can sign on and find a partner and get there, or you can do it all together during your class time. Um, so I got asked, does your picture have parallel lines? And why, yes, it does. So I'm going to indicate yes. And so then my person can eliminate and so on and so forth. Okay, and so while this is happening, I'm gonna quickly switch over to my side. This is the teacher view. And so I can see who's been paired up and I can see if anyone was waiting for a partner. These are questions that their people waiting would be asked as they're waiting so that they have something to do while they're waiting for a partner. And then I can see what questions are being asked. So Bridget also asked, are there any parallel lines? That pair. Um, and so I can see what they're asking, what's been chosen. Sorry, Charlene, I gave it away. <laughs> and, um, and then I can actually, if I'm you know, chatting with you, I can ask some feedback questions. I can ask some follow-up questions. Um, I can go in and say, ooh, did you really mean parallel or did you mean perpendicular there? How do you know which one is which? Something that asks and follows and perpetuates the conversation and gets people going. You can also play you versus your class by coming up with one class account and you are playing against them. Um, so one person might sign in on behalf of the class and then they all have to come up with the question together and one person is the scribe and you're playing against them. Um, that's a fun way to really build up the competition and also the collaboration in your class. But this is just a really nice way to, like I said, boost math vocabulary uh, get them really honing in on what they know and what they don't know, and to see all those misconceptions that pop up. Um, so I love this activity. And like I said, we were talking about Desmos more generally before, but I wanted to give you a specific example of one that you could use to boost discussion. If I just search polygraph, a whole bunch pop up. And so this is something that pretty much any topic you're looking for, it will have activities for it. Um, and so they're also adding more for elementary, 
but really for middle school and high school, there are tons of activities um, that you can use. And so even if you do a Google search like polygraph integers, you'll be able to find something that you're looking for. Um, but pretty much any activity. So are there any questions about this first activity? You can unmute your mic or you can type it in the chat. Has anyone used polygraph in their classroom before? No. I've never used it, but that would be great for some, you know, at home type things, interaction with, between peers. So it was fun. I messed up. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Well, that's, and that happens more often than you think, like <laughs> with our students and everything. And so they get mad at each other initially thinking that the other one purposely messed them up or whatever, but that actually leads to a whole lot more discussion because then they're saying, oh, I meant to say perpendicular instead of parallel, or I meant to say this instead of that. And so um, whenever I used it in my classroom, kids got really intense, but in a, the best possible way. <laughs> so it's also kind of nice to, um, like I said, get them talking. And even if they're in different homes, they'll still be talking to one another through this text and potentially through a chat um, on live. So, oh, good, JB. There, there are plenty of elementary activities for Desmos too. And Desmos is completely free, entirely free. Um, that's one of the most amazing things about it. Uh, I try to only use free things always <laughs> because when I was teaching, I didn't have money to pay for things. So I always used the free stuff. So Desmos was number one on my list. And if you go, I'll skip to this slide here. If you go to teacher.desmos.com, that's where you can set up your free account. Um, they also have tutorials on learn.desmos.com. And right now they're doing daily webinars um, for basics. So just like getting your class set up, everything, as well as more advanced options. So if you've set up a class, but you're looking to build your own activities. Um, they have some webinars for that too. But even I pretty much just stole activities from others or from Desmos and not really stole because they're all publicly available. But I used existing activities and only started creating activities um, towards the end of my 10 years in the classroom um, because there are just great activities already available. So why reinvent the wheel? But um, you can get set up everything on teacher.desmos.com. And then I did want to also share this is a more detailed version of the screen. I have that in there. So if you need more guidance as to what pieces are where, that's included in the slides. Um, and then just information about the polygraph activity. Um, so has any, this is our next engagement. Oh, are you able to use this for elementary students as well? Yes, definitely. Um, elementary students are able to, I would say upper elementary for the polygraph activities specifically, but there are other activities um, that are all the way through pre-K. Like they're, they're really building up their database. And yes, I do have a link to the slides. Oops, let me get back there. Okay, sorry, my chat closed. Here's the link to the slides. Um, and so that has the list of resources and pictures and extra stuff in the notes section too. 
All right, our next engagement strategy is my favorite no. Has anybody heard of this before? If you've gone through the College Career Math Ready training, you probably have. Um, has anybody used this strategy before? Oh, we got a thumbs up, good. So Charlene, I might ask for your expertise in a few minutes to share a little bit about it. Um, I'm gonna play this, actually, you know what, I'm not gonna play this video just because the audio has been terrible um, and we need administrator rights to log into our computer, which I don't have in order to share just the audio with you. So I'm not gonna share the video, but please watch it because it walks you through the entire strategy and it shares what one teacher does um, to really look through and do and participate in this. But basically the gist is, sorry, my phone is ringing. <laughs> Let me put that away. Uh, the gist of this strategy is you give one problem to students and it's a problem that you anticipate will have multiple mistakes made. It's a problem that may not be obvious what the answer is right away, but it's just one problem and it can be solved maybe in about four to five minutes. Doesn't take students a ton of time, um, but they solve it on an index card and then they put their name on the opposite side of their work. That's gonna be important for the next step because then you collect all of the index cards with all of their work, all of their answers, and the first time you do this strategy, you might wanna give yourself a day, an overnight um, to sort through. Once you get used to the strategy, it'll be, go more quickly, but you're going to sort all those cards into correct and incorrect piles, like yes, they got the answer, or no, they did not get the answer. And then you're going to sort through the no's in particular to find interesting um, mistakes common mistakes and errors that you think could really promote a lot of discussion. And that way, students will see their actual work. It will be anonymous because their names are on the back of the card instead of on the front. And you always start by pointing out the positives. So what you really liked about um, the students' work, what they did correctly, um, and then you ask guiding questions for um, the students to discuss. So what might I like about this example? What misconception do you think this student had? Um, where did the student um, show the correct process? Where did they make a mistake? Um, things along those lines to really build up the discussion. And so in a classroom, this goes pretty quickly because it's index cards, it's one problem, they hand them in, you sort them, you have a discussion. But outside of the classroom, you can also make this work. And so one way I had thought could be interesting is through Airtable submission. Has anybody used Airtable before? Uh, so if you haven't used Airtable before, Google Forms works as well. But what I like about Airtable is it kind of combines Google Forms, Google Sheets, and um, some pretty organization <laughs> techniques. And so I'm going to show you what I mean. And so what I would give students is this form. It's pretty basic. They would just put their answer. They would either type in their work or they could upload a picture. They could upload um, just a recording of themselves explaining the problem, whatever you wanted from them. And then they would put their name and submit. On my end, I would see this coming through. And so I put in four sample students already as if they submitted the form. And you can lay it out as a table. And so they gave me their answers. I immediately know that these two are incorrect. 
And so I have some extra columns here, correct or incorrect, and I can do a drop down and select it. So that's what I like about Airtable is it allows for single select, multi select. Um, you can do rich text, so they can do bullet points and paragraphs and those kinds of things that Google Forms doesn't always allow easy access to. Um, I can hide their name from my sorting view and my student view. So when I go to show students, um, they can't see who submitted what, which is nice. And so if I am looking through these and I say, okay, cool, this one's correct. Ooh, this one's a really good exemplar. I wanna show that as a positive and what it could look like and what I would expect of it. Um, this one's incorrect. Ooh, I think that's gonna be a common mistake because even though they showed the square root, they didn't actually take the square root. So I'm gonna throw that in as my favorite no. And then I can, my students will only see my favorite no's. And if, even if I go into correct and incorrect, they can't see those um, because I've filtered them out. So I can even delete that, delete that, and then they can't see it. And so then I can show them, all right, we have this image here. What's my favorite? Why do I like this problem? Why do I like this mistake? And then hopefully someone would jump in to my conversation and give me a reason why I might like this, why I might appreciate this mistake, and why I might love it. And we go from there. I would say like you added seven to both sides to get rid of the seven on the side with the X. Yes. Like that? Exactly. I do love that because you're using your reverse order of operations and you're trying to get the X isolated and that's awesome. And so things like that, um, I'd, I'd be encouraging that conversation and getting kids interested. What's nice about this Airtable too is I can just pull this up and I can be on a Zoom call. I can be in Google Meet and they can see this. They don't see the person's name. Um, it might, like I said, take a day to process it, but theoretically I could do this in one setting where they submit their work and then I just sort it in my little stacks as I get their answers and then I display it out to them. Um, so either way I can do this, my favorite no, um, whether it be digitally or in person. I could also do this in my actual classroom where they submit it electronically, especially if you're a one-to-one -one school, um, you can have them submit it electronically and then you don't have to have a million index cards. It's up to you, whatever you're most comfortable with, but this is an opportunity to make it digital. You can also then save all of the students' responses and then um, like for parent teacher conferences or just if you're trying to go back and see what students are understanding or what they're not, um, you can sort them by their name and see everything that they've responded, everything that they've included. Um, you can look for patterns in their thinking. You can look for common misconceptions that they as an individual or the class as a whole has. Um, so you can really take a step back and reflect on that work. Um, so that's Airtable, again, Airtable.com, and that's free as well, and it connects to your um, Google account if you have a Gmail account, but you can also use it without having Gmail. So um, there's a lot of functionality to this platform, uh, a lot of different things you can play with, and so I won't go into too many details, but I'd be happy to do some one-on-one -on -one or um, do a tutorial with you sometime if you're interested in playing with it or trying it out. If this is overwhelming though, Google Forms works great too. They can submit their work, upload a picture, 
uh, through Google Forms, and then you can just look at individual responses. Just be careful to hide their names when you're presenting it, if you're presenting it digitally to the class. Because you don't want any individual student to feel bad about themselves or get made fun of for their answers or responses. All right, questions about my favorite no. And again, I encourage you to watch this video about it because it's three minutes and it really goes through everything. Yeah, I think it's a great strategy too. It's, it's very helpful for getting kids talking and to realize that mistakes are okay, which is a part of a growth mindset. Um, yeah, just to really embrace those mistakes and learn from them and learn even more than if you had gotten the right answer right away. Yes, exactly, clarifying the why. All right, so I wanted to um, also, and I'm going through these somewhat quickly because I want to give you time to also discuss your own ideas and what you've been coming up with and what questions you have. But I wanted to show you some updates to the frameworks um, that will hopefully be helpful whether we are doing distance learning or traditional learning um, when we come back in the fall. And so if you go to the OK Math Framework page, you can access it either with this bit.ly or this is the full URL, either one will work. But you're gonna click on it and you'll see the OK Math Framework. If you haven't checked this out ever, make sure to check it out and explore because it is fabulous. Um, it's been put together by Oklahoma teachers for Oklahoma teachers, and it really has a whole lot of information available to you. And so we have the whole framework, but I wanted to point out that we now have math distance learning resources linked right on the main page. So you can select math distance learning resources. And when you first get to the main page, it has our COVID-19 support links to our websites, but then it also has grade level resources. And if you've seen the instructional resource database um, that the curriculum and instruction office came out with a few weeks ago. What I've done is I've taken those resources and I've filtered them out for your applicable grade level. And so, for example, seventh grade, just keep in mind these are optional. These are not mandatory or anything required by the state, just offering as a help and support. Um, but we have the general resources that are applicable a no tech sample learning menu. And then we have additional no tech, low tech and high tech activities. And so these have all been filtered just for seventh grade. And so if you click on an activity, it'll either have a file attachment for you or a URL that you can use to search. And it gives you a little bit of a description for any activity or prep you might have to have, or if there are student questions involved, um, learning goals, all of those are listed um, throughout here. So you can search through all of these. And then below that, um, Fawn Nguyen, who came to our state um, for math teacher circles last summer, she's a math consultant out in California, she's compiled um, a whole lot of rich math tasks uh, that you can use. And so I've put some of them in here as well. And so if you're just looking for one or two good problems that really get kids thinking, um, we have a million listed here for you. So that's also included here. So that is one thing that's new on the frameworks. The other thing that's new, and I'm going to jump to back to the seventh grade main homepage. The other thing that's new is we now have engagement strategies listed. 
And so just like the My Favorite No, there are different activities that you can use in your classroom to get kids involved and discussing and just engaged with the math. And so if you select engagement strategies, we have them banded by early childhood, upper elementary, middle school, and high school. And so you can look through these. And if there's a blue link, that means there's a video that shows you how the strategy works. Otherwise, um, it just gives you a description of the strategy and a template um, that you can use if it's applicable. And so we have a lot of strategies listed here that you can use. And some of these I borrowed from our English language arts friends, but I adapted them for math instruction. And so I made sure that if they mentioned, uh, you know, something that was more English language artsy, I tried to change the description to make it applicable for our math world. And so my favorite no or my favorite mistake is included in here. Um, but we have a lot of options. And so I wanted to include those engagement strategies on our pages too, because as we're re-entering the classroom and looking at both a blended model or a traditional in-person model or all remote, we don't know officially yet how it's going to look next year. Um, I wanted to include as many strategies as possible that we could be using no matter what our classroom environment looks like. And so that's why um, engagement strategies are now linked, but also those rich math tasks and those no tech, low tech and high tech options for whenever you're involved in your class and in learning. Um, so are there any questions about any of the new resources? for the frameworks. Okay, so now is the breakout sessions, but I think we have, let's see, we have 14 people. And so what we're gonna try to do is just um, unmute and discuss all together, if that's all right with you all. Um, and what I'd love to just discuss are any of the ideas from today. If you think they'll work for your classroom, how might they work for your classroom? Um, or what other ideas are you using that are really helping with distance learning or just with student engagement in general? And then looking at the various ways we could be starting our year or we could be holding our school year, what might um, be the best ways to implement these engagements and activities? So my voice is off now. So somebody else gets to talk. <laughs> We've been uh, talking about this type of stuff. Um, I mean, I love your strategies, but I think being able to use them in the classroom and then also if we are home because I think that's what a lot of our students are struggling with is just the change of the type of teaching and learning. And so, you know, trying to keep things that are as close to what we're doing in the class, they're going to look a little different, but, you know, being able to adapt that to where they understand what the process is, is good. Like the, my favorite note, you can do it on car, index cards in the classroom, or you can do it if you're one-to-one, -one, but then at home you can do the same idea so they understand what it is, even if it's done in a different format. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, when everything is unstable and changing, it's nice to have some consistencies that you can keep in place. What other thoughts do you have? This is, J this is JB, um, and I agree with what was just stated, but um, just even in going back to the department like website of what the actual resources are, you know, we know there are lots of strategies out there, but again, being put in this predicament, you didn't really have time to plan and you're just trying to figure out and put things together when you have yeah. this clear picture of 
what are some options that, right, okay, I'm going back in the fall, here are three strategies that I'm really going to, right, like introduce and reinforce in the first couple of weeks and break out another additional. So you can clearly see here are so many things that I can utilize, but you can be strategic in how you introduce them and how you keep them going in your classroom. So I appreciate yes. that. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think you're absolutely right, JB, like choosing two or three, you know, versus saying, oh, I have to do all of this and I have to do it in the next two weeks. And I can't, you know, like that's impossible. We can't, we can't do that. But if we can pick two or three, like you said, super strategically um, and really implement them when we're back in the classroom and then carry it over to remote if we need to, um, I think that's huge. And that's gonna really make an impact on your students. I think I had, this is Brandy. I think I had the opposite problem as most people did because we were already digital or online or whatever you want to call it. So my problem was going the other way. So I had plenty of online digital content. I didn't know how to give them something that wasn't a packet. I, mean, I don't know how to do that. So I'm glad that you have some no tech stuff on there that I could maybe help me out. But that's what my biggest concern is if we continue to do virtually is like how am I going to accommodate my kids that, that don't have it when they're not used to that in the classroom and I'm not used to giving it to them. Yeah. No, that's a great point, Brandy. Um, we think a lot of times about getting kids online and getting kids connected, but also we don't want them sitting online for six or seven hours, you know, each day and so offering a chance to change it up a little bit get some no tech options out there um just get them thinking can be huge so yeah one thing i did for the no tech was just encouraging my teachers to um have them play games i mean even if it's like yahtzee or or you know uno or you know something with numbers that just got them playing around with numbers sometimes something like that helps yeah uh, the sudoku sudoku sudaku i can't ever say that <laughs> get puzzles things like that you know something like that that's challenging where you could say hey i want you to try to do one of these and then if they do one you know give them a harder one the next time or something like yeah that. and sometimes those are fun i once had some kids create their own sudoku and then they would trade them with each other to see if each other could do them and that was really fun because um, they they said it was harder to create the puzzle than to actually solve the puzzle because <laughs> of all the rules how else have people been utilizing different strategies and distance learning and how might it tie back in? Um, I'm not quite sure if, can, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, I kind of came late to the game, so I apologize. I, I kind of okay. got sidetracked, but um, I went on the, the math side and, and I brought up that whole um, teacher resource things and there were some really cool things on there. Our um, district, um, started to use Canvas. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so um, we, while we were familiar with it, we weren't really like using it, using it. So it was, it was quite a big push for us and the scholars, you know, to get on there. And for teachers like me who struggle with technology, it was really hard to uh, find things that worked well without, you know, the it, it not working well, but I, I, I found Flipgrid, which I really, um, really enjoyed. I had hoped my scholars liked it too, and some did, and I had a lot who, who, who didn't interact with it, but I really, um, I really like the idea of it um, after exploring it and seeing that it could also, um, if we get back into the classroom traditionally, it could be implemented um, and used um, in, in different ways. And so I was really um, uh, excited about that. Um, and 
the different sites that you can also use with it. So I'm looking at that for the classroom as well. If we end up not, you know, not going into the classroom, implementing that a little bit better now that I've uh, learned from my trials and errors. Well, that's just it, Sherry. I mean, this is, uh, although it's crazy, it is a time where we can have some trial and error and we get, you know, some grace with that. And I love that you're pushing yourself to try a new platform and it's never easy <laughs> whenever it's new technology and all of this extra stuff. But that's great that you've seen how Flipgrid can apply to your classroom and that it's not just a one and done or for this purpose only. It's something that we can use throughout and then it's worth it. Um, so that, that's awesome. And none of this um, is ever going to be easy. <laughs> or if it is easy, maybe we're not doing it right. <laughs> so it's, it seems like it, uh, it takes some time, it takes some effort, but then the results, getting those students engaged, getting them excited about math again, that's always my dream. If I can just convert a couple into being math kids <laughs> every year that I'm doing my job. So it's always the goal. Talking about that trial and error, um, my, my daughter is at, at OU, so she's you know finishing up her classes online and she had a final last night and none of the videos were uploaded correctly, so they had no access. So all the kids, who aren't supposed to be on their phones had to text the professor to say it's not working. So he had to delay the whole thing. So trial and error is not just for those of us who are brand new to this, it's even for those systems and schools who've been doing it for a really long time, but these teachers have never had to give a final online. Yes. Like so so everybody's learning, which is, you know, it, it gives you a lot of grace because we can say, oh, we didn't know. So there you go. You just have to give the kids grace too, because sometimes they have that learning curve as well. Right. Yeah, it's, it's def learning curve is the definite right word for all of this. So it, it's tough, but um, I love hearing and seeing everything great that's coming out of all this, because sometimes it's hard to find the positives, but um just seeing how many people are finding a new tool or a new strategy or something uh, that's really engaging their students it's been awesome to see that work and that growth um, and so we have a few minutes left and i don't want to keep anyone from speaking if you if you want to speak but i did want to point out just a few more resources that are linked so we have our secondary mathematics guidance document. There are also guidance documents for elementary available on the curriculum and instruction page. Um, and then we have some frequently asked questions. We are going to shift these office hours to every other week. Um, I want to give you all a chance to relax a little bit as the school year is coming to a close. Um, but I also want to keep learning opportunities open. And so um, I thought that every other week was a nice compromise. So I'll be posting those on the SDE math webpage in the calendar. Um, but I'll also continue to send out the OK Math newsletter with the password and link and reminders. Um, I also included a link to this presentation again. And then I wanted to briefly highlight if you're looking for some rich math tasks and strategies and tools and tips, um, the Global Math Department is hosting a webinar tonight. And so if you want to have some more math fun, um, they're engaging in math tasks and how they connect to the five practices for orchestrating discussion in your classroom. And so that is at eight o'clock tonight and I've included the registration link if you're interested in that. And then next Tuesday, since we don't have an office hour, if you are interested in 
participating in the webinar next week, um, there's Making Math Thinking Visible, and it's showing how to use EdTech tools um, in your math classroom. And I believe they're focusing on distance learning, but the platforms that they're using could definitely connect to um, in-classroom, in-person learning as well. And so there's a registration link for that. And Brandy already presented on a couple of these. And so um, we're getting the recording for that put on our group meeting notes um, that are also on the math webpage. But um, if you're interested in seeing another tutorial, I hadn't heard of Satori at all. So um, I was interested to see what that is. But Sherry, there's Flipgrid included on that one too. So <laughs> you can see even more tips and tricks there. Um, yeah, so that's, that's an additional opportunity that I wanted to share. I'm posting all of these webinars on the calendar that is on the sde.ok.gov slash mathematics page. Um, and so if you're ever curious what the webinars are for a day, um, I post those, I try to get them, you know, weeks in advance, but as they come up, I add them. So every day I'm adding new webinars um, that are emailed to me or that are shared on the OK Math page, Facebook page or what have you. So if you have any interesting webinars that you would like to share, um, I will get them put on that calendar as well. Okay. I'm sorry, I have a question. Yeah. The, the, the webinars you were just talking about on this yeah. page, so you're going to put all of this on the, 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 the so, OSDE? Yes, this, so yeah. I will post in the chat. Um, my page that I get to control, or my set of pages, <laughs> is the math. Um, okay the collection of pages and so on that main math page if you just scroll down a little bit there's um, a calendar that lists all the different webinars and has links to register mm -hmm. and so um, like tonight's is linked on the calendar and then next week's is also linked okay. um, and then i'll repost the link to these slides too and the direct link is also in these slides All right, let's do this poll one more time. Okay, so after learning about the different resources that are available and learning about a couple different engagement opportunities, how are we feeling? Mm -hmm. about five more seconds. Okay, so of those of you who answered, we've got a few more twos and threes going on. So that's good. Feeling a little, little less stressed maybe. There's a lot of resources out there, and so it can seem overwhelming, but hopefully um, we've streamlined a couple for you and given you one or two things that you can take away and go with. Um, and to echo JB's point, um, thank you so much for everyone who shared and offered your ideas and what's <laughs> been working for you, um, because really, it, you're in the trenches and you are trying these activities and trying these engagements and trying all of this and you are the experts here um, and so really I couldn't do my job without you and I just appreciate you guys each and every day um, always and you're working so hard for your students and it's just it shows. Um, if you want to steal this poll obviously I know number four is hilarious, Charlene, but <laughs> you probably can't use that one with your students, but if you wanna steal the slide and replace the image um, with a different one, you can definitely do that. Um, I, I try to change it up each week. So if you want to look at past slides, you can see um, all of the different 
gifs and everything. And yes, it's grape juice, totally. <laughs> so, um, and be amuse it maybe. But uh, please uh, use whatever you want to from my slides, um, steal whatever you want to. And if you have any questions ever, please do not hesitate to reach out. Um, we should, we, we have been interviewing for a director of elementary mathematics. Um, we, we should know more updates as to when that position will come into being um, soon. However, if you have questions at this point and you're an elementary teacher, don't be afraid to reach out to me. If I don't know the answer, I will find someone who does. Um, but otherwise, I'm here. Please know that you're appreciated, know that you're loved, know that you have multiple people and this network here for you. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to stay on, unmute the mic, ask them, um, or otherwise have a wonderful rest of your day.